Happy Sabbath. You know, when I um, woke up early this morning, heard the rain, that was good news. And for some of you, are like, no, rain, and I have to go to church? And I heard one time that if you have never planted anything, then rain is a problem. But you see, those of us who plant a lot, rain is a good thing. Right? It is a blessing. So I didn't mind us getting a little wet coming to church. Um, before we get into today's study, you know, one thing I appreciate is when individuals talk to me, especially if it's something I've said in the sermon, in the study. You know, a couple of weeks ago, someone, you don't need to know, it's, you know, we'd say in Jamaica, none ya, meaning none of your business, right? Uh, the, the important thing is not the person, is the fact that the person said to me, I had quoted uh, Matthew 5, verse 44, that says we should love our enemies, bless those that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Okay? And the person said, you know, we were talking and said, I know you didn't mean this, and I said, that is true. But I was so appreciative that the person brought it to my attention, because sometimes you know, you're watching the clock, you're getting towards the end of the study, and you're like, well, this is only so much I can get done. So what it was the person wanted to ensure or confirm, I was not saying that we should just allow folks to walk over us. Right? We should be humble enough to when we have to talk to individuals, when we talk to them, even if we have to assert ourselves, we do so in humility. You know, sometimes because we are in the right position, we tend to get arrogant. Sometimes because people do things to us that we know they shouldn't do, we get all upset and out of our faces, and we're no longer behaving like Christians. So I am in no way saying we let people just walk over us, okay? And so that's kind of where me and the individual we talk about. I'm just saying everything we do, let's learn to do so with love and with compassion. Amen? Amen? All right. So we will be put in some positions and we will be tried. And and sometimes we'll fail, but you know, we have a good God who is very forgiving and loving towards us. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you so much for your goodness. I want to thank you for everything that you have done for us, and especially for me, Father. Who am I that you should choose to take me out of the ghetto and put me into a place where I speak your words? Father, even now as I get ready, I'm, you have prepared me. I know that. I have all full confidence that you have prepared me to do this job. But Lord, I need you and always need you to continue to speak through me. Touch my heart, soul, and mind that every word that comes out of my mouth is what you want to. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. There's no doubt in my mind that there are others who could do a better job than I do. None whatsoever. But why God has chosen me to address this topic that's his business. And as I've been studying to present on the Sabbath, so we're getting ready to start a study on the Sabbath. And many of you, why do you have to do a study on the Sabbath with people who are already coming to church on the Sabbath? Well, I will tell you this. I've been studying this because uh, I got convicted probably three months ago to do a series on the Sabbath. But I was finishing up another series. So I started studying deeper on the Sabbath. And I can tell you, I've been blessed. So I do hope that you will be blessed also. But I know for certain it's important that I understand this. And I'm going to share or remind or review with you some things um, over however long. You know, Jerry and I were talking because Jerry likes to put together these series on YouTube. And, he's, and I said, I don't know how long it's going to be because there are some topics that I've been looking at that may be two parts. I just don't know. 
we'll just see where God wants to take us. But before we go there, all right, so the topic is the creation of the Sabbath. Before we go there, we will finish up on God's plan. We have one last word, nutrition, right? So we have gone through godly trust, open air, daily exercise, sunshine, proper rest, lots of water, always temperate, and then nutrition, right? You know, I've shared with you a number of things. I will continue to share nutrition with you as an extra thing, right? So we're done with God's plan today, but we'll continue to look at different things we can be doing to build our immunity. Why do we need to build our immunity? Why? It said that we don't get sick. There are many viruses out there, right? There are many things that wants to come at us, but building your immunity is like this wall that keeps them at bay, right? The best thing to do is build your immunity, but we have gotten so used to, I'm not feeling well, instead of letting our immunity take care of our bodies, guess what we do? We grab a pill, we go to the doctor to get um, some form of injection, we, we, take, we take what? Antibiotics. Antibiotics hardly ever work anymore because we're over antibiotics. We, t- we use antibiotic soap, antibiotic hand wash, antibiotic everything. Right, But let's focus on building, well, let's look at the scripture, I apologize. It says, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to whose glory? The glory of God, right? So remember, this is not about us going and saying, well, I am a plant-based person, so I am invincible. You know what makes us invincible? Being obedient to God. And even though we may do everything right or according to the word of God, God may still use to choose us as examples and put us through some stuff to show people how Christians behave in troublesome times. Just remember Daniel in the lion's den. He did everything as far as we know. Daniel did everything as God would have him to do. But Daniel... If you look at the prayer Daniel prayed for his people, he did not extricate himself from that prayer. He said, we have sinned, right? And so we have to realize that when we're obedient to God, it's up to God whatever he wants to do. I was talking to Nelly today, and she was saying someone in her family was saying their back was hurting and so forth. And she's like, what's your problem? It's God's back. If he wants it to hurt, let it hurt. We have to get to the point where everything about us, we know it's God's. Let him do what he wants to do, right? And we just continue to serve him. All right, so we're going to talk about Dennis's favorite fruit. Dennis couldn't wait when I told him it was blueberries. So I told him, listen, blueberries have so many things good, but I can only share a few with you, right? It helps prevent cancer, right? Helps prevent cancer. It is also um, one of those things that will help to lower blood, pr- blood pressure. Many of us, I never had high blood pressure for years. In fact, they thought something was wrong with me because I always had low blood pressure. And then I started having high blood pressure and you know, my wife gave me ginger and, and garlic and all that stuff and pu- pushed it down. But look at that, blueberries. She could have been giving me blueberries, but she gave me garlic. So what does that say? Garlic isn't as nice as blueberries. I think she wanted to, you know, (laughs) no. Garlic is really good for you. But I wish I'd known about blueberries because I'd say, kind, less garlic, more blueberries. (laughs) All right. So it keeps bones strong. Look at that. All the things that we suffer from, okay? What else? says here, it boosts memory and focus. People tell me all the time, I can't memorize scripture. I can't do this. All right, start eating blueberries. <laughs> Be obedient. Start eating some blueberries. Okay? All right? And then, and if you can grow it yourself, we tried. We have two trees, and we did get a few blueberries this year. Hopefully next year we'll get some more. Okay? Improves eyesight. Look at that. 
Probably I wouldn't have had to pay for LASIK if I had been eating blueberries. Okay? Improves eyesight. And then, right, look at this big one. Powerful antioxidant, which leads to what? Boosting our immunity. Uh, so, again, I've shared a number of things. I will continue. I, I think till God comes, if, I, if God blesses me to continue to study with you, I'm going to keep sharing stuff with you because there are so many things out there that we can be using naturally, naturally, to take care of ourselves. Yeah, it may take a little longer. Like when my wife was working on getting my blood pressure down, it took a while. You know, she had me drinking ginger tea and eating garlic twice a day and, and ginger tea like sometimes two, three times a day if I were at home, but eventually started going down, right? But we want the quick fix. That quick fix have other, has other um, um, side effects. All right, so now let's get into today's study. So we're talking about the creation of the Sabbath. Do you believe this? The weekly Sabbath rest is one of God's greatest gifts to us. Do you believe that? So God, and when we say God, we're talking about the Son, Jesus, in terms of creation. I'm going to share, remind, review with you that Jesus was the one that created everything, right? So when Jesus created our world, gave us two important institutions. What were they? Marriage and, and the Sabbath. What has happened to marriage? Exactly. Exactly. You can, marriage is all but, you can pretty much marry your handbag or, as the ladies say, their pocketbooks. I don't know why it's a pocketbook because it can't fit in your pocket, but, right? But marriage is pretty much gone to the side and the Sabbath is under attack, but not the way we initially thought. In a sense, yes, but the Sabbath is under attack because they're calling something else the Sabbath. What else are, is being called the Sabbath? Sunday. Sunday. And I, I'm going to share a couple of um, blurbs from articles that I saw that they're, show, they're doing this. So when someone says to you the Sabbath, you need to explore that a little bit more with them because you may be talking about the seventh day and they're talking about the first day. So you need to make sure you get that clear, right? Let's go to what the servant of Lord said. She said, the Sabbath will be the greatest, te the great test of loyalty, for it is the point of truth, especially controverted. There will become a time when people will say, all right, yeah, I understand that, you know, you, 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 you should not have any other gods, even though by worshiping another day, they're actually serving another God. And, and yeah, we need to do this and we shouldn't commit adultery and we shouldn't steal and so forth. But this Sabbath issue is becoming so contested. And we need to be ready. So as we go through these studies, there are times when we will have to repeat and enlarge, right? So there are things that I will um, share or will review that we'll have to come back and review again. Okay? That's one of the ways. As a teacher, I know that's how we learn. That's how I learn, and that's how many people. You, you expose them, they get to look at it, they, you come back and remind, and eventually it makes it in your head. All right? She continues. She says, when the final test shall be brought to bear upon men, then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve him not. There are going to be people who think they're serving God, but they're actually not serving him. Now again, this is where that humility comes in. Just because you and I know the truth that the seventh day is the Sabbath, you, will, you are going to have to take your time in a compassionate, loving, patient way to explain and show others that the seventh day is the Sabbath. Who are the saints of God? Um, Holy Spirit put this in my head. Revelation 14, 12. Who are the, the saints of God? Those who keep the commandments and have what? Patience. We have to have patience 
Look at Revelation 14, 12. We have to have patience. You know, someone, if people knew me a while back, they'd say, look at you talking about patience. And yes. But, and I understand the faith of Jesus, but I'm focusing on the patience. Right? The bottom line is this. I never, I used to be one of the least patient individuals around. But I've learned and I'm learning two things that I keep, God has to keep working with me on. To be patient and to be humble. To be patient and to be meek. Right? Meekness is just another way of saying being humble. Right? All right. So let's keep going. She says, while the observance of the false Sabbath, she's meant talking about Sunday, while the observance of the false Sabbath in compliance with the law of the state. There was a time people is like, that will never happen. I remember when I, that, I first heard that. I wasn't a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm like, whatever. You know, Is that true? Can't, if you're looking at the news, and I, please don't waste your time too much looking at those things. But if you're looking at current events, you can see this happening. When, all right. When during the when the pandemic started and it continues to happen, which day have they been forcing individuals to stay on? on? Sunday. Many countries out there. If you were there was one country where if you were on the I don't I know the name of the country I don't want to call it they were shooting you if you were out on Sunday. That's so. And it's coming to a place near you right at your doorstep called the U.S. of A. So if we don't believe it, it's going to happen. It's happening all over the world. It's going to happen. I will touch my country that I grew up, was born and grew up in. We have a seventh day, supposedly, a seventh day Adventist um, Prime Minister, a Seventh-day Adventist governor, but yet still, guess which day they closed down? Sunday. Seven, so you, I'm sure when Seventh-day Adventists voted for him, they're like, yeah, we're good now. No, Becky's face is like, what? It's true. I couldn't believe it. When they were going to close, I said, all right, definitely on Sabbath. No. Sunday. All right? But they say they're a Seventh-day Adventist. All right, so it says, while the observance of the fall Sabbath in compliance with the law of the state, contrary to the fourth commandment, will be an avowal. That's what you put your allegiance to, an avowal of allegiance to a power that is in opposition to God. The keeping of the true Sabbath in obedience to God's law is an evidence of loyalty to the Creator. Friends, we're going to be pushed. And we're going to be pushed hard and very soon. I can't tell you when, not a prophet, but I will tell you this. Very soon, we will be pushed on this point. She continues. She says, while one class, by accepting the sign of submission to earthly powers, receive the mark of the beast, you do not want to receive that, okay? If, you know, just in case you haven't reviewed it in a while, go review uh, Revelation 14 verses um, 9 through 11. Okay? It's not nice to have the mark of the beast. It says, the other choosing the token of allegiance to divine authority receive the seal of God. Friends, that's what we want to receive. The seal of God. So, let's get into our study. Who made the Sabbath? Who made the Sabbath? God. God in whom? Jesus. All right, so we're going to look at that. So let's start with John 1, 1 through 3. Right? It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and notice this. Without him was not anything made that was made. So in Genesis 1, 1, where it said God created, Jesus created. If you look at Isaiah, 
I remember the first time I really, I would read this, I'd hear it, never spend time on it. I believe it's Isaiah 9, 6, right? Isaiah 9, 6. Um, not certain, but you know, um, I think I have it in my head, so you find it. It says something about Jesus being the everlasting Father. But then they say, but Jesus is the Son. You know what? The Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Son, and the Father, they all work together as one. They all work together. Wouldn't it be nice if in your families, all right, don't even throwing kids in there. Wouldn't it be nice if husbands and wives just work as one? Maybe one time, you know. It seems like we never can get on the same page. And, and we think we are, but we, we're truly not working together like we should. If husbands and wives, and then throwing the kids in the mix, if we all could work together as one, then maybe the church would work together as one. Okay, so now it's what's happening outside in our families that we bring in the church. So friends, let's see if we could emulate what happens in the triune God head. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and work together as one. All right? So, we know Jesus, even though it doesn't say Jesus there, we know it is, but we will continue. Because somebody may say to you, but yeah, how do you know it's Jesus they're talking about? All right, so let's look at verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Now, that doesn't tell you it's Jesus necessarily, but isn't that something? That Jesus came. He made this world, gave, and he came, and they knew him not. How would you feel? You give all this stuff, this good stuff, even though it was messed up by the time he got here. It's worse now. And he came, nobody knew who he was. Well, most people didn't know who he was. Now, let's look at something that may be able to convince them a little bit. It says here, and the word was made flesh. Now, which member of the Godhead became in human form? Jesus. All right. The Son. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. See, when we study with others on the Sabbath, we are going to need to get in there, understand a lot of verses, and pray hard. Even while you're studying with them, pray hard. And the last thing you want to do is think you know everything. Because if we go into any Bible study and think we got everything, we are setting ourselves for failure. What we need to do is study and walk into any study, especially individuals who are not convicted on the Sabbath, and we pray constantly as we're sharing and we're helping them to see. So now, friends, let's say they, whomever we're studying with, says, all right, I could see that Jesus made the world. So if Jesus made the world, what else did he make? Everything. What are we talking about today? He made the Sabbath. So Jesus, if we agree that Jesus made the world, then he made the Sabbath. Because he's the one that made all those days. Well, let's go to Hebrews, just in case you need more to explain and help, right? In Hebrews, it says, God who at sundry, various, sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spake, spoken unto us by whom? His son, Jesus, whom he hath appointed here of all things by whom he also made what? The world. Uh, now, there are other scriptures, but you may only have a limited time to help. So I have, what I'm trying to do is review with us some of those things that hopefully will help us. You know, um, whenever someone asks me to do a Bible study with them or discuss the word of God or discuss God, they don't necessarily say the word of God. The first question I ask is, do you believe what the Bible says? And if they tell me, no, I can't do a Bible study with them. I said, because that is my 
whole basis. If you get rid of the Bible, I don't, I can't do a study with you. Because I will not try to convince someone using worldly things. Now, if it's the Bible and the Bible. So what do I do? I then pray, if the person will allow me to pray with them, I'll pray with them and ask God to convict them of the importance of us using the word of God to prove who God is. And then I continue to pray for the person. But if you, if someone wants me to use history or this or that, yes, I can use history from the Bible. If you want me to use science, I can use that from the Bible. I just, you know, if you know a better way, you tell me, but that, that's what God has convicted me of. Now, question two. When, how, and of what was the Sabbath made? So let's look at some verses and then we'll answer. Right? I, I know you know, but you know, we're going to look. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. All right, so we know all that was done in how many days? Six days. Now, let's think about this. Could God have just thought everything into being? Of course. God, it, God gives us examples. He's methodical. Right? If you notice, God created different things and then he placed things in it. Right? He shows us how to do everything. No one, he knows, you know, we wouldn't be able to just create stuff. We could make stuff, but God gave us examples, just like he has given us an example on the seventh day. But let's keep going. It says in verse 2, And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Did God get tired? So why would he rest? Uh, his work was through. He gave us an example. Some of us, if God hadn't led me to the seventh day truth, I'd have probably died from overworking. My wife knows that. Even as a seventh day Adventist, I would work 100 hours sometimes, 80 to 100 hours in six days. And the seventh day, I didn't want to go to church. I wanted to rest. But that's not the type of rest God wants. Yes, we need physical rest that we should get every day, but we need to rest in Jesus. So God wasn't tired. God is showing us how we need to do things, right? Now look at verse 3. It says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now, which word did you not see in either of these two verses? Now, you didn't see first day, but a day we're talking about. Does it say Sabbath here? No. Does it say Sabbath there? Not overtly, but it's there. We'll get to that shortly. Now, let's go to Exodus 16, 26. Because one day my son came home from church. My wife and I had gone to another church. I don't know if I went to speak somewhere or she went to sing somewhere, whatever the reason. And my son was, he was not happy. And I said, what happened? He said, well, I just heard a, a, an elder speak. And he said that the first time the Sabbath was mentioned was in Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11. And he's like, Dad, I know that's not true. But no one said it. It's like everybody let it slide. No, that was not the first time. In fact, this is not the first time the Sabbath was mentioned. I chose this verse. But if you go to Exodus, um, as far as overtly mentioned, if you go to Exodus chapter 16 and look at verse 23, look at verse 23, you will see that the Sabbath was mentioned. Now, I'm an accountant, so I can count a little bit. Does 16 come before 20? Yes. So it's because here's the basis of many out there. They're like, well, the Sabbath was given to the Jews because that's when it happened on Mount Sinai. But that's not the first time. That was a remem reminder of the commandments, right? What the law of God, did Eve and Adam break the law? 
What, what do we know sin is? They committed sin. So what does 1 John 3, 4 say? Sin is what? The transgression of the law. So it had to have existed all the way back from creation. But as far as saying the Sabbath, the first time the word Sabbath was used is in verse two, um, Exodus 20. That's not true. Exodus 16, 23, as far as the English version goes. Now, it says, six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath? So we know the Sabbath is not the first day. Now let's look at another verse in um, chapter 16. It says, see, for the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days, Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. Right? So we know the seventh day is the Sabbath. You could see that throughout the Bible. But let's go back to Genesis 2, verses 2 and 3. When you look at the word rested, there, if you studied your quarterly this week, I was so glad they did that, right? If you study your quarterly, they shared many words that mean rest. Well, the word in Hebrew that was used for rested is Shabbat. So it's like saying, and he Shabbat on the seventh day. What do you think Shabbat means? It's the Sabbath. It's rest. The Sabbath is all about rest, resting in God. So even though in the English it just used the word rested, God Shabbat, and he gave us the Sabbath, right, to rest with him and in him. And then the same word is used in verse 3, where it says he had Shabbat from all his work, which God created and made. Now, I'm not telling you you have to get into all this with someone you're studying with, but I'm sharing with us. That the word Sabbath, actually, if we read the Hebrew, we would have seen Sabbath, Sabbath or Shabbat there before. Okay? All right. Let's keep going. So what were the question? What was the question that I asked that we were looking at? My wife said, who, what, when? Was that the order? How about when first? Okay? When was the Sabbath created? In the beginning, creation week, right? So we know that the Sabbath was created at the time of creation. And how was it created? Kind of by whom? By God, right? God created it. So it says by God who rested, blessed, and sanctified it. So if God is the one that created the Sabbath, and he also rested, blessed, and sanctified it, can man change, take those rest, bless, and say, and put it on another day. We may try, but we can't do it. Doesn't matter that they say they're doing it, they're not doing it. They cannot do it. They think they are. What does the Bible say? They will think to change time. Notice, think to change times and laws. They can't. They can't, right? And then the final one what is the Sabbath made of? Only one day, the seventh day, right? The Sabbath is made of the seventh. Now again, as you, as we study with others, it is imperative we understand that we can't force anyone to do anything. Let me put it this way. Our, our, our son and I were having a conversation this morning and he said, you know, I think this boy is more um, stubborn than I. And I said, well, yes and no. I said, you had two things when you were his age, but you were so stubborn that I think if we took you out, you would have allowed that to happen because you held on. But I said, the difference with him, he has many things he's stubborn with, but he forgets it quickly. Like you say something and then he's like, I don't think I'm going to win this battle. So he just forgets it. Then he forgets. Then I lay, but so that's the thing. We can't even force kids sometimes to do things. What makes us think we can force adults to do anything? So let's try to use the encouraging praying methodology. 
and let God work on each other. Right? If you've been trying to win someone over to God and it's not happening, do not give up. Keep praying. One of the ways my, my wife works with her sisters is calling them up, wishing them happy Sabbath. If they're saying they're doing stuff, she's like, you know, you shouldn't be doing that, right? You know that already. But she does so in a loving manner, not a condemning manner, okay? Let's do what we need to do in love. All right. In Exodus, we read this, but we're going to go through the Ten Commandments, right? Uh, not the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath Commandment, Fourth Commandment. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Then, we're going to address that later on, again, about the all thy work, but not today, in a future study. It says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of, thy, of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. All right, so you and I may not have manservants and stuff like that and maidservants, but we may have tools and we may have different things. So I would suggest if you have a neighbor that wants to borrow your lawnmower, do not lend it to them over the Sabbath. And they say, but that, you know, you're the seventh day. Adventist. I'm not. And, and Saturday is the best day for me to cut your lawn, cut my lawn. I'm like, okay, you can have it to, uh, Sunday, but not for the Sabbath, right? Because that's your property, right? It's your property. And then when you have, whether it's strangers or, or your family or friends come visit you on the Sabbath, listen, if they're not coming to church with you, don't leave them in God's house. No, seriously. I know you may think it's harsh, but if we have family or friends coming to visit us and they're going to stay over the Sabbath, you know what we tell them? Bring church clothes. <laughs> Bring church clothes. I've had people say to me in different churches, I haven't heard that yet here. Um, hopefully I'll never hear it. Oh, Pissard, I'm not going to be at church next week. Why? Oh, I have family members coming in town. Bring them to church. You're going to let family members keep you from coming to worship God, which he told you to do? We were living in Georgia. We had some family members coming to visit us, and we had a full house. You know, people were sleeping all over the place. At the end of Friday, I think we only had one of Cain's sisters still with us. Everybody booked on Friday. Because they know we were not going to let them in, leave them in God's house on the Sabbath. Everybody took out, took off, went wherever, you know. And we were not going to let them take off the Sabbath and come back Sunday. We don't play that either. Go back home, right? We have to learn to let people know that we'll hold to the principles of God no matter what, all right? All right, it continues in verse 11. It says, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them, is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and holiday, made it holy. Friends, we have the privilege of worshiping on a holy day, one that God has declared to be holy. All right, let's keep going. So for, um, question three, when did the days of creation week begin and end? You know, this was a problem for the, the pioneers. They never kept the Sabbath the correct way for a while. But God winks when we're ignorant, right? They would come up with times, whether it's from 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible gives us specifically. The Sabbath changes, it could change every week in terms of the timing. It says, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, when you go look up evening, it really means sunset. Okay? So look it up. And I made sure I went back and looked at it again. Right? Now, some people... You know what has happened to the internet? They're changing stuff. There are things that you could find and show certain biblical proofs that have been... It's disappeared. It's gone. They have rewritten things. So you, it's so, we have to be so careful of what we search for on the internet these days because they are channeling us towards a particular day. Ecumenism, my wife says, is true, right? So we know the evening and the morning, but let's look at this again, right? 
Then in verse 8, And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And we'll look at one more. And the, in verse 13, And the evening and the morning were the third day. So do you think the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh day, it was the evening and the morning? Yes. That is the pattern. So what we need to do, when we get to preparation day on Friday, and I kind of do it a little different. I try, most times I get my clothes prepared for Sabbath on Thursday night. Okay? So usually I have my clothes. That way I don't run into any um, problems of not having appropriate attire to come to church. So usually I get, now yesterday I did do it Friday. I was home yesterday. But most times I get my clothes, my shoes get cleaned, everything on Thursday night. Because I do not want to bounce up against the Sabbath. Too many of us, we push the edges too much. If so, I, you know, number of years I told my wife, if we don't have food, then we'll just eat whatever we have. If we haven't cooked, we're not going to go cook on the Sabbath day. Because we had six days we could have done that. Cook it, put it in your refrigerator. Whatever makes sense for you, right? So we know it's the evening and the morning. All right, for whom was the Sabbath made? Who was the Sabbath made? For? For man, right? God didn't make the Sabbath for himself. He made it for us. Now, well, well let's look at what Jesus said, right? Because we know it's true. Um, so it says, And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Now, I've had people who don't even know the Bible quote that part of the verse to me. They're like, yeah, I don't understand you guys. The Sabbath was made for man, so why you guys, you know, put so many rules around it? It's as if they're saying, it's made for us so we can do anything we want with it. All right? The car you drive outside, it was made for man, right? And last time I saw um, Carol's cat, our dog, wasn't driving a car. It was made for us. Can we just go drive the car as fast as we want to without any penalties? Exactly. Right? Can we drive the car without gas in it? How about if we let oil not go, you know, the oil run out? Just because something is made for us doesn't mean we get to dictate how it's used. There is a manual. Now, we don't go reading our car manual until something goes wrong, and then we don't even read it. We just take it to the mechanics and they overcharge us. Uh, but we have to, but here's this. So God says, Sabbath was made for man. So let's go to Ezekiel and see how God explains this. So it says, moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths. Remember, Jesus said the Sabbath was made for man. So God gave us his Sabbaths. Why? Look at this. It says, to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. Yes, we ought to rest in Christ. We should be getting physical rest every single day. On the Sabbath day, we rest in Christ. We come, we worship him. You know, we, we, we get, you know, we fellowship with each other, right? But we need to rest in Christ. Then he goes on later in verse 20. And hollow, keep holy, my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Every time we come our, across the Sabbath, we think about the Sabbath, we should think about God. Not for us to do whatever we choose to do. We should think about God. And what does God want us to do? We should honor him, keep his day holy. And we can only do that with him dwelling in us. So who is the Lord of the Sabbath? Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. We'll take a look at Matthew and Mark. It says, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And then Mark kind of rephrases it a little bit. It says, therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. God gave us the Sabbath, but it's not our Sabbath. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. It's his Sabbath. My wife would say at work when people are people who would say to her, your Sabbath, she says, I do not have a Sabbath. God has a Sabbath. I worship on God's Sabbath. 
We don't have a Sabbath. God, it is God's Sabbath. He, all the days belong to God. But he has chosen this one for his reason. To bless, sanctify, and help us to draw closer to him. It says in Spiritual Gifts, uh, Volume 3, those who trample upon God's authority and show open contempt to the law given in such grandeur at Sinai virtually despise the lawgiver, the great Jehovah. Every time we break God's Sabbath is like trampling on despising Jesus, despising the Godhead. You know, we need to be careful, more careful in doing our best through the power and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us to keep God's Sabbath holy. You know, in Matthew 5, 17, we know Jesus is the one that made it. He created the world, therefore he created the Sabbath. So if we were to get rid of the law, including the Sabbath, he would have told us, right? It says, think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to do what? To fulfill. There is nothing while Jesus was on earth that he said that would suggest that we should get rid of the Sabbath and start worshiping on the first day. Mind you, we should be worshiping every day. But God has given us six days to work. And on the Sabbath, we should rest in him. Then verse 18, Jesus says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, you know there are going to be people that say, aha, till heaven and earth pass. And they're like, don't you guys say that this world will be destroyed? Now, you know, heaven, we, there are more than one heaven, right? They have speak, spoken of different heavens, right? But we know this world will be recreated, but there will still be earth and heaven. And Jesus is saying, till all that, it will still be here. Look at verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, lest someone misunderstand, not us, lest someone misunderstand and say, oh, but there it is. I'll be in heaven. I'll just be called the least. No, you will not be in heaven. No lawbreaker will be in heaven. Okay? It's when you are spoken of, you will be called the least. Right? But you will know no lawbreaker, no sinner whose sin has not been washed away by Christ will end up in heaven. All right? Now, let's take a look at the final question. It says, for how long was the Sabbath intended to be kept? Forever. Look at what um, Isaiah says. For as the new heavens and the new earth, we know that's the recreation of this earth, right? The new heavens. So think about it. Because some is make, will make it seem like well, we won't have any, we, you know, after this, earth, there won't be any Sabbath that we need to worship on anyway. Not so. Here, the prophet says, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, this is God speaking through the prophet, shall remain before me, said the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Continues. Then in verse 23, says, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one, what? Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord. This is in the new heaven and the new earth. From one Sabbath to another. So the Sabbath is here for eternity. And if you can quantify that, please show me. It's forever and ever and ever. Right? So forever. You know, in Review and Error, August 30th, the servant of the Lord says, Every man has been placed on trial, as were Adam and Eve in Eden. As the tree of knowledge was placed in the midst of the Garden of Eden, 
So the Sabbath commandment is placed in the midst of the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments. She goes on. In regard to the fruit of the tree of knowledge, the restriction was made. Ye shall not eat of it, lest ye die. Of the Sabbath, God said, ye shall not defile it, but keep it holy. He told us, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It says, as the tree of knowledge was the test of Adam's obedience, so the fourth commandment is the test that God has given to prove the loyalty of all his people. Yeah. Oh. Then said, finally, the experience of Adam is to be a warning to us so long as time shall last. It warns us not to receive any assurance from the mouth of men or of angels that will detract one jot or tittle from the sacred law of Jehovah. The Sabbath was created by God, Jesus, Creation week, and it will be with us forever. Now, let me share a couple of things with you before we wrap up. So this is an article, and I just grabbed the title and then a paragraph, I believe, or two. It says, Legislating Morality, Restoring the Sabbath, right? So you read that, you're like, oh, good, they're talking about us. They're not talking about Sabbath keepers here, or the Sabbath we hold. And, you know, I'm going to butcher the person's name. It says, how Sorab Amari wants to mend our broken thread of tradition. And so this is relatively recent, right? May 20, 20 um, 21. And so the part I grab, it says, uh, they were talking about a lot of stuff. And I, it, so this is a piece of it. But what I want to show you says that presents a paradox. They were talking about keeping Sabbath. By removing civic laws, governing the Sabbath. For example, is not the Sunday worker now chained to his employment? So they're saying, when you, if we don't have civic laws governing the Sabbath, which they're calling Sunday, then people will have to go work on Sundays. And there's going to come a time when they will not want you and I. And it will be enforced where you want to go to church? You better go to church on Sunday. So we have to start making up our mind. Are we going to keep the spurious or the far Sabbath, which is Sunday, or are we going to keep God's holy Sabbath, the seventh day? Then, here's one. I could not find a date, and it's by Tabitha Green. Claim your day of rest for improved health and productivity says, my parents were firm believers in honoring the Sabbath. Coming from the Christian tradition, this meant that we observe a day of rest on which day? Sundays. But she just called that the Sabbath. Okay? On this day, no household chores, aside from cooking and washing the dishes, could take place. No knitting or mowing the lawn. And absolutely no shopping. You are going to start seeing more and more of Sunday being referenced as the Sabbath. And we need to be, we need to understand this. And so I believe why God impressed upon me to do a study on the Sabbath first is for me. It's always for me first. And then that I can review with you that which we need to remember so we can share with others. You know, in our quarterly this week, our study, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come unto me, ye who, who labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Now, the word for rest, I can't remember it. I thought I would, but I don't. Um, limitation of being human. Right? It, that's not the Sabbath rest it was talking about. But you and I need to remember that if we are burdened we by anything, let's go to Jesus. If there's things that we are struggling, there are things we're struggling with, especially with keeping the law of God, go to Jesus. Let us not continue to make excuses. 
Because every time we do something that breaks God's law, that is just, it could be simple as different little things in our families are going on at work or wherever. The first thing we need to do is to reconcile with God and we can reconcile with each other. So friends, as we go through this series, I trust that we are going to learn some stuff. And I say we, because I'm learning some stuff. We're going to learn some stuff, but more than more importantly, that we will be obedient. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you for again, Lord, for the privilege you give me to study with your people. But more so, Lord, that you share so much with me. And I appreciate it. Lord, help us. Help us to be obedient to your words. As you reveal things to us, Father, things we need to remove from our lives, things we need to allow to come in our lives, Lord, I pray that you would help us to be obedient. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing in.